So this is interesting as well. This is from Warren Sharp, Sharp Football, tweeting this out. Best havoc rates on defense. So this is rates of plays resulting in sacks, forced fumbles, interceptions, TFLs, or pass breakups. Giants are number one in the NFL. The Browns are number two. Vikings three, Niners four. You see the Eagles, who play the Browns, are seven. Um, that's not good based on what the offense is at. great. But I want to I flip it and talk about the defense. What have you seen uh, from the defense when you look at them on tape? They, I mean, everybody's kind of – there's missed tackles. There's all kinds of stuff like that. The defense has played – not quite as good as they did last year and not nearly as good as they're going to need to to carry the offense. I, th I think this is the least talked about thing that should be talked about more. This defense is not playing well. And um, we can say what we want to say about the offense isn't helping them and et cetera, et cetera, but that's not how the football world works. We're watching Pittsburgh go to 3-2. and two. Very well could have been 3-1 and one if Dak didn't make a really great throw down there on the goal line. Uh, could be four and one, excuse me, based on their defense playing dominant football. The Browns offense, yes. Does Is there a correlation between how the offense is playing, how much a defense is on the field, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, there is. There's some of that that plays into this. But you are isolating the defense's play away from the offense. And when you're doing that, you know, the, the, the thing that's working best for the Browns defense is that this offense is so bad because they're getting ignored. The havoc rate is true. They do create some negatives. They do get their hand on the football here and there. Now, they're not creating as many turnovers as you would like. Uh, JOK had a nice did a nice job with this on Sunday, but um, generally speaking, they're not creating the turnovers that you would like, and some of that can regress to the mean if you're getting your hand on footballs and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm not surprised by the havoc rate. They do create that. They're in constant pursuit of negative plays, which is good. Negative plays make things hard. The problem is they're giving up explosives, and they're not tackling. Period. And they're not doing their job consistently enough. And teams have a great feel for what they're going to do. They're one of three teams in the NFL right now who refuse to live in anything too high coverage. The NFL is being so uh, dominantly run by defenses with too high coverage stuff that we're talking about goofy conversations about banning cover two defense. The Browns, the Cowboys, and I think the Vikings are, are the three teams that just don't care about that. They live in one high. They just want to play that all the time. They want to have a bunch of guys in the tackle box. They want to try to create negative plays by being aggressive, and they often don't disguise coverage. The Browns essentially refuse to disguise coverage. They, they, they are, I think, at the lowest or the second lowest rate of coverage manipulation pre to post. They don't, they don't do it. They don't really care to live in that world, which is so startling given how much evidence we have of how hard it is to play quarterback when the scheme goes from one thing you think pre-snap to the next thing post-snap. And that's just, it's amazing to me. So, they have not done well with that. They've continued to be a one-high team, which they were last year. And there's really just a refusal to change. They talked in the offseason about wanting to add in a change-up. I watch a lot of their defensive film. I don't see much of it. I see much of anything that resembles like a, a change-up. And, and not that you're throwing your change-up as much as your fastball, but, it, I mean, you're, you're talking about maybe like, you know, one-third one of that. Like, they're just not, they're not doing anywhere near enough. And then you add in... Teams having a great feel for what they're going to do. Daniel Jones talked about it. The, 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 there have been many teams, the, the Dak and the Cowboys talked about it, that have a great feel for what the Browns are going to do and then being able to use those tendencies and what they're doing pre-snap to get into the best play possible. And then if you add on top of that the tackling issues, you can see where this is a problem. They have had allowed the eighth most rushing yards per um, after contact per carry. So that's startling. They're not getting guys to the ground at the rate that you would hope. Overall, they've allowed the eighth, mo eighth most yards after catch in the NFL this year. So that's a rough thing to be in the bottom 10 of. Fourth most rushing yards allowed over expected per attempt. So that's a bottom four defense and getting guys to the ground. When, the, when, when a program thinks everything is fit up, you have a guy there, you should get them on the ground, they can't do it. They've allowed the most explosive runs in the NFL over 25 yards. They've allowed, so you, the havoc rate stuff is good, creating ne negatives, but when you're giving up big plays on top of that, that cancels each other out. And honestly, I'd rather, you know, get more bottled up situation where you're not allowing explosives rather than creating like a four-yard loss. That's a different thing. Allowing a Jaden Daniels 40-yard scramble is different than just getting a four-yard negative two-yard situation, right? So they have um, six or fewer in the box at the highest rate in the NFL right now. So that kind of is weird. But they also have uh, the highest rate of eight men in the box. So they're just like either they're loading up in the box or they're playing with nobody in the box. And there are only three defenses that play in that single high usage. Like I said, Browns, Cowboys, Vikings. So they're telling you, 
hey, we're either loading up the box and cover one, or when we play two safeties, we're not going to have anybody in the box. So they've allowed the second most explosive runs, like I said, fourth highest yards per run at five yards per run, and they're giving up explosive plays. So they're saved a little bit. I think they're 15th in EPA per play. They're like an average defense. And I think, Dave, you would agree with me, the conversation coming into this year was, hey, if the Browns can have an average to below average offense, not awful like they are right now, if they can have an average to below average offense with an elite defense, they got a chance. They got a chance to get to 10, 11 wins again. But what we're seeing is an awful offense mixed with a now average to below average defense. That is a formula for two, three, four win type of season. That's what we're in the middle of. The defense is getting ignored, passing blame to other people, et cetera, et cetera. There are teams in the NFL who are proving, even though your offense is bad, you can still find ways to win games by being a dominant defense. And the Browns are not leaning into that at all. They're not getting the job done on that side of the football. They're not tackling. They're not coaching it up well. And uh, ultimately, it's leading to teams have a great feel for what to do against them and are finding solutions to the problem. And that's why the pressure's not impactful. They're not getting home enough. And, you know, that's that's it. The quarterbacks are not having to think post-snap. They know where to go with the football. And you're wondering, like, okay, why, why aren't the Browns getting those ridiculous pressure numbers they've had over the, you know, last year or even the year before that with Joe Woods? Well, they're not – quarterbacks aren't – I'm off and hold the football an extra half second or full second. They have an answer. They know where to go with it. They're not getting anything confused and muddied pre-snap to post-snap. And to me, that is the job of the modern defensive coordinator. Make quarterbacks hold on to the football. Because if you can do that, you have a chance to constantly, if you if you have really talented front four, um, win a bunch of snaps uh, and, and ultimately get, get off the field pretty often. And, uh, you know, last year it was pretty good. Largely because I think there, we, we look back on it, there were some scheduling advantages in terms of weather and then some quarterbacks that were coming into Cleveland to play. And, and that's just kind of like taking some things away from them. But they were good until teams have now like, oh, we've got a full season's worth of, of data on what Jim Schwartz likes to do. And that's where you saw like McVay torch them and some others obviously leading into the Texans with C.J. Stroud taking care of them pretty, dispatching them pretty easily. This is a concern. You know, this is a concern. And... Uh, I don't have an answer for how it gets better there because they're not they're not providing any examples for how it does, which is a problem. So we're all negative talk today. That's where we're at. 